Hello Internet. Um, I am still on trying to learn F sharp using exorcism.io. A bit of a um, disclaimer, this is about the fourth time I'm attempting this. For some reason, I try and write the code and it just doesn't execute and then I copy and paste some code I'd written in earlier and that's fine and I don't know what is the difference it's one of those days where I can't see the difference so I'm going to try and head straighter at least for the first test I'm going to try and get to the working solution a little quicker than I normally like to but hopefully it's going to work this test is about telephone numbers cleaning out some telephone numbers, uh, removing dashes and that sort of thing and validating, doing some validation on the telephone number but we will get to all that nitty gritty as we work through the tests. So to start off I'm going to run the test, I'm going to use the command .net watch test. What that is going to do is it's going to watch for any changes to any of the files and then rerun the tests each time it detects a file any of the files have changed that makes it a little easier to not have to rerun the tests every time um, the first one is of course failing if we check what this is wanting to do it wants an input of that it wants the brackets the space and the dash removed and it wants us to return that but as a number not as a string so to start with I'm going to open this up and tell my function what the return type should be the return type is called a result un64 string a result means we are either returning an OK of un64 or we're returning error of type string. The type of input is string. These are things that I can clean up later on um, because F sharp can figure them out for me. It's one of the, the benefits of using F sharp. But for now, just in case I make a mistake or something, I like the idea of having that a bit more explicit. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to create a little inline function that will convert something to a to the UN64. So basically I'm saying I've created a function called as long. It takes XS as a parameter. I actually want to change that to digits. Uh, digits gets piped into a function called sec to array. So it takes a character sequence, turns it into an array. That gets piped into string. So it becomes a string from the character array and that then gets passed as a UN64. Then, so that's that's a function to create a 64-bit integer from an array of digits. The next thing I need to do some cleaning on my input. Um, as you can see it's not in the right format to start with. We can't, if we have brackets, we cannot pass that to, to an int. So that has to be cleaned out. So I'm going to say let cleaned equals to, and that's going to be equal to input, which I'm going to pass into sequence dot filter and what I'm going to be filtering on is char dot is digit. Um, so that's going to take out just the digits 
from the string and with those it will um, get piped so what we're going to return is okay cleaned or we want to as long cleaned my test is starting and it passes you have no idea how happy I am like I said this is I've been this is my fourth attempt I think now um, to to do this video I'm going to uncomment or unskip my next test I think that's going to work as well um, because if you look at it it's the same same thing that does work the next one is just lots of spaces I think that should work as well It does pass my next test if we remove the skip from that this I don't think is going to pass because it's looking at the number of digits being returned and it wants an error and nothing in my code is sending an error um, it doesn't pass so we should be returning this so let's just return an if uh, can we just do a length cleaned dot does cleaned have a length Okay, cleaned doesn't have a length, but a list might. What if we made that a list? If clean dot length is not equal to ten. That's the length of a phone number. Uh, return error. Else return OK. All right, that is working great. Back to my tests. This is now a, another one. It's also not going to work because nowhere do I return. 11 digits must start with one.
so that doesn't work so what we want to do is 11 digits must start with 1 so we've got another if cleaned dot length equals 11 then else bit of nesting going on there I have just noticed I have spelt cleaned horribly. I am going to change that to clean cleaned. Um, my tested pass. Um, but I don't quite like this code, so I'm going to change it to a match. Uh, I'm going to use digits when digits. dot length equals 11 return that mm, maybe digits is a little long let's be cool and remove the vowels We want to see if the length is that. Then return this error. Or else if we are just happy. We can return. try do a little bit of piping here so we're going to pipe digits into as long into okay And that works. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to change this to OK. I'm going to add that pipe to OK there. And I am just going to pipe that into OK. My test is started. passes I'm going to move on to the next one happy with that little bit of cleanup ah something 11 digits must start with one and I'm not checking to see if it starts with one but I am happy that about that for now because my test is passing 
if I come to another test that fails, I can then do something to fix that. But for now, I am happy. Um, this current test is failing, and that is valid. But now we see the one must be removed. So we need to figure out a way of removing the one from the beginning. Um, So what if we just simply remove one from, okay, but we want to do it after cleaned. So after we clean it, we want to remove the one, um, let's call it headless. dot head is equal to one then just give us cleaned dot tail else give us cleaned okay I am doing a C sharp equals. Okay, what this is doing, head is the first character in an array. So if we have seven, three, four, six, eight, then the head is seven, and the tail is an array of three, four, Six, eight. That is true for all programming languages, but the functional languages do have um, are a bit more formal about head and tail. In C sharp, you could do something like cleaned dot uh, single or default for your head. And you would have clean dot skip one for your tail. Um, they don't have the idea of head and tail. Um, things like JavaScript actually allow a deconstruction. So you could say something like head tail equals headless. I think that would work. At least the head would work. Um, but it's quite quite cool the way it allows you to, to just break that up. Um, anyway, we now need to shove that into there. So we remove the one if it starts with a one, or else we just allow it to carry on. My test is running. And now that works. So now this not adding a test here is fine because we have already removed that one. So if we have 11 digits coming in and it starts with a one, it'll get removed and we will now have 10 left. So it will skip over that. Uh, so I didn't need to do that test there, which is why it's always a good idea to only code as much as you need to get the current test to pass. Uh, if we thought about the, pr the next test, what the next test might have been, we might have added extra code in here, which would turn out to be unnecessary. So with that in mind, I'm happy for now with what this looks like. I am going to unskip my next test.
and that also works. 11 digits with punctuation. Oh, okay, because this starts with a plus, and I am removing punctuation before checking the the head, I get that as a bonus. Okay. More than 11 digits. Okay, now it's a new error message. This isn't going to pass. I don't know why they want a, an error for wrong number of digits and an error for more than 11 digits. But, well, hell, we can, we can give them what they want. So, if digits That should work. Okay, that's fine. My next test is not going to work because we at no point return that error, so there's no way it can work. It doesn't. Um, so what I need to do is, before um, I clean, I need to check if there are any letters in this. I can't do it after I clean. Uh, so how we can do that is, let's just have an if, if um, I sometimes just bracket so I can sort of separate my thoughts into that and I can always remove the brackets if I want to. Uh, we want to say input and we want to check if the sequence uh, if exists in the sequence char dot is letter. If it is, we will then uh, error with letters are not permitted or else we will carry on with this. My test is started. It is running. It passes. Ha! Huh. So we've got a quick little escape there. If that is true input sec is char then we can just escape immediately doing the next one And that fails, because at no point do we say punctuation is not permitted. Now, of course, it's looking at that, but we do have accepted punctuation in the brackets, the plus, the dash, and the space. 
Um, so we need to do a test to see if that exists. So let's use input if input um, contains and let's just use a string because a string should be a sequence. So we've got two brackets, we've got a plus, a minus and a dash. Um, but then it's okay. So what we want to do is to see if the punctuation is not in this list. So we want this to be a little more complex then. Uh, let's just say C for char. So we want to see if C um, what we've actually got is punctuation. Let's give that a try. Um, But we don't want it to exist in here. Okay, we're going to just have to see if that is valid. And then we want to tab all of this in again. Okay, that is not working. Let's try break this up a bit. Uh, C as a char. If that we can return immediately. Else return. I know this is a bit funny. Um, I just want to, to try and get it thought out and then I can clean it up. Ah, this is going to return. This should be not. I think that's how it works. No. Ah. 
Ah, wait a minute. I need is invalid punctuation because I'm returning an error, which means that should return false and that shouldn't be knotted. Clean number with dots. Okay, that means I have left out a dot in valid punctuation. Okay, that is working. Let's clean this a bit. Um, That has a function like that. I'm going to be making small changes watching the test um, so I can easily roll back if it doesn't work. At still works if it's not punctuation we can return immediately so maybe we should start with that and then have an and Okay, that still works, so it's just if that and not that, then go ahead. Also, I want to clean this a bit. Uh, so let's use another match. So we are matching input with use in um, all let's yeah all's fine I suppose uh, when just do that. Uh, why put it into something else if it's already working? Yeah, that should be a pipe sign.
that works. I'm going to do that there then as well. I'm not sure if I prefer it or not. Just uh, um, oh, I don't know what what's more correct because I'm I'm matching input. Um, maybe it's a more correct way of doing it. Welcome to provide an opinion on that if you like. I'm interested to know what other people do or prefer. Great. Next test, uh, I'm removing the wrong one. Uh, area code cannot start with zero, which is very interesting because where I am from, all area codes do start with zero. We, we write our numbers exactly like that. Uh, my telephone number would have been 011. Um, but here, cannot start with a zero. Uh, so basically what we want to do is we want to check the head of our digits return that save to run the test Well done, Jonathan. The next one is very similar. Area code cannot start with a 1. So let's copy that up to there. Place that with a one. Ah, wrong, wrong one. Area code cannot start with one. Run that test. Exchange. Okay, that seems to be this number. Um, I didn't know that was called an exchange code, to be honest. I think that's the same rule from where I am as well. I've never seen one starting with a zero. Okay, uh, why is that failing? Area code starts with one. Did I save this? Digits head equals one. Area code cannot start with one. Area code that does start with one. Let me copy that again in case I made some sort of mistake. Why are you not working? Zero one works. So what am I doing differently? OK, 
going to try and swap these two around and see what happens. Invalid if area code starts with one. Ha. Huh. Okay, let's try that. This has seriously stumped me. Type this headless. Headless is a char list. I'm just doing some pattern matching checking. Maybe I am missing something. So I'm looking around a little bit and I am wondering if something like this is going to work. Although that might be checking to see if that is the entirety of the sequence, which is not what I would be looking for. Cons operator, what is this?
my starting one is still not working. I'm going to skip it again. get it but at least I learned something new so what this seems to be is that is similar to um, if I had and then you know, a list like that um, it seems to be similar to uh, JavaScript where I could say and then throw my array in there but in this context it seems to be doing doing a test on that which is pretty cool but here I am removing a one from the beginning but I only want to remove that one if that skip that coolness let's do that as well just to keep some sort of conformity okay next exchange cannot start with zero um, that is my Zero, one, two, position three. Want to see more about this cons thing? There's also an at which seems to be in the middle. So I want to see if I can do something similar. Um, uh, no, I don't know if that's going to work because it's not going to be a specific point unless I do something like that which I would prefer not to uh, so let's just say digits one 
digit three equals zero, we will return exchange cannot equal to zero. Okay. Why do I have a squiggly? Oh, I'm an idiot. That should be a character. Starting running. That passes. Okay, uh, next is the same but with a one. I am going to do this in sort of one go. Let's change that to a one. Cannot start with one. Next we've got area code cannot start with a zero. I think we should have, okay, I've broken something. Ex invalid if exchange code starts with one. Exchange code cannot start with one. this all over again. Maybe that hadn't run yet. Let's hope. Okay, yeah, I just hadn't saved it. Um, okay, these I think are going to work because I'm removing that. Um, so I'm going to unskip a few that I think are going to work already. Ah, uh, please don't tell me that it's frozen. VS Code does that sometimes. It is a little bit annoying. I don't know why it does that sometimes. Um, is generally a fairly stable product. Reopen. Um, save. It looks like my screen is still showing my VS Code window, which is good. Uh, .NET watch test, let's get that going. Um, let me find my tests. Don't need that. Um, I just want to wait for this to, to get going again. And then I think I'm going to remove a few skips because I again what the hell um, This is a wonderful advertisement for VS Code, isn't it? I've, ne I've never had this. Uh, window is no longer responding. You cannot see this little window. Um, but I'm going to press reopen and wait again. Uh, let me just do this unskip. 
if this works we are pretty much at the end anyway so I'm just going to run .NET test I'm not going to worry about the watch it passes all 18 tests um, I'm looking at this um, I'm not unhappy with how it looks um, maybe I could turn that into a a function so let's call it make clean all we'll see if it can figure out what all is and all will be equal to that um, should have maybe done this the other way around and then let make head this clean equals that And then I can match all pipe into make clean pipe into make headless. Run the tests again. Oh, it doesn't like this. It was because it doesn't know what clean is. Thought it was supposed to be clever and be able to figure that out by context. Let's tell it what cleaned is. Let's first figure out what cleaned is. Cleaned is a a char sequence, and all is also a char sequence. Maybe clean does not. That is a list. that works I'm just going to do some renaming here uh, C is fine let's call this digits let's call this digits and it's the same thing everywhere move that down there just gives us a nice little thing those comments can come out and we probably don't need this anymore Great, I am happy with this. I'm going to submit my answer. I will send you the link to look at it. Um, please do uh, let me know what you think. Please tell me how you would do things differently. I'm very keen to actually learn from, from this whole experience. And awesome, thank you very much. 
sweet cheers bye bye